Hello, everyone. I'm Sequoia, and this is the podcast Sex for Life. We have a very special, special, special guest today. He is my Tantra teacher and the Tantra teacher who really started the movement of the modern Tantra in the United States. He is the pioneer of uh, the art of conscious loving, the Tantric path. And I am so honored to have him here to speak to us about Tantra, about his work, and about how we can apply Tantra to our lives. So without further ado, I would like to introduce all of you to Charles Muir. Hi, Charles. Thank you Hi. so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Well, first of all, how are you? I know everybody's going to be wondering how your health is and um, you know, if you're ready to come back and start teaching all of us again. One doctor told me I was supposed to die a year ago in September. My cancer had gone systemic. It was in both lungs and ribs and spine and several organs. And uh, I'd had radiation, I'd had chemo, I'd had two surgeries and several pocketfuls of holistic protocols. And it seemed as if this cancer was going to eat me and take my life. I got luckily through a friend of a friend of a friend into a Stanford program of experimental immunotherapy for this type of rare cancer. And I'm happy to report I'm still here. The the last CT scan said no new cancer, all the old cancer is either gone or dead. Mm. You know, I had gotten real prepared for dying, but I had no plans for living. Uh, <laughs> COVID, had, COVID had shut the school and it was pretty full time getting better. Uh, I consider myself better now. I've started scheduling programs. I've changed the name of the school from uh, the business name of the school from Source School of Tantra Incorporated, Inc. Uh, to the Art of Conscious Loving, Charles Muir's Art of Conscious Loving. Because uh, since I started presenting Tantra, there's a lot of people out there using that word um, and it's got bad press. Mm. They won't let you advertise on Facebook and other places. So I went back to the title of my book, the best all time selling uh, Tantra book uh, in nine languages. It's still available in five languages. And the art of conscious loving, that's that captures it. Tantra has too many meanings now. Uh, yeah. Art, to take love making to a level of art. Mm. To want to be as good as you can at being a lover. Mm. I love so it. So that's why I changed the name and uh, I'm opening again in April in New York City and up here in my new home area of Carmichael, California. And I've also agreed to come back to Boulder, Colorado, one of my favorite cities. Uh, they've been through a lot of problems and they need their Tantra. Mm. I'd really say all of us have been through a lot of problems with COVID. And one of the biggest findings is that people that were made to be together all day, 24 seven with the kids, not an eight hour off to work. They weren't making love more, they were making love less. Yes. Finding buttons to push and uh, the number of divorces have, has gone up dramatically in the last two years. So we need a practice to help us reconnect. And we need that practice, not just if we're a couple meeting to get back together and connect more deeply. But singles, 
separated by COVID, afraid to be with each other. Uh, the Art of Conscious Loving presents a series of yoga, tantra, yoga exercise series. Because what the students have told me on the phone when they're, I'm telling them, look, it's cheaper to do tantra than get a divorce. They're telling me we want to, we just don't know how to get started. And that's the problem for most people. They're either going to go all the way or they do nothing. So this is a series of techniques that opens our energy to each other, heals some of the wounded places that being together all the time can uh, create, expands the parameters of how big is love? How big can love be? Now, Tantra is most known for its sexual connotations, and that's an important part of it. But uh, Tantra is more than sex. It is the practice of things that help you grow in love. Opening your heart, opening and healing the beloved as well. I really love all of what you were just saying, Charles. And um, I too, when people ask me, you know, how do how do we begin a practice of tantra? Um, you know, one of the things that I share with them is the first thing to do is to have a grounding practice because so many people are not practicing anything. And if they can start each day by connecting their energy um, to the earth, or at least connect to the flow of energy in their body and then connect with their partners, that's actually one of the the first steps, which I learned from you studying with you is like, when, when in doubt, what do you do? Ground, right? So what would be a, a tool that you could share with everyone would be the first thing for beginners to use to get onto the tantric path? I think it's learning the tantric arts mm. of breathing. Mm and connection, that the, the purpose of what we're doing is that we be more connected. We want to reach at one moment. So embrace standing, lying, sitting astride, put the chakras together, mm. and then start breathing in synchronicity. When two people breathe in together, hold it a little while and breathe out together, it establishes harmony between their energy and a powerful dynamic where our energy is being shared with another. And uh, part of that breathing is when you exhale to bring your consciousness so it moves down, you feel your way down through your head, your throat, your pelvis, and your base chakra, connecting to the earth. Because the more grounded you are, the more energy you can run. And a lot of people start Tantra, they start moving a lot of energy and they get a little crazy. They're not <laughs> grounded. Uh, so grounding, but everybody, no matter how shut down you are and no matter how big your headache is or if you've had a lousy day, you can still bring your bodies together mm. and breathe. And that will lead you into the next practice, which leads you into the next. And that's where it starts to get juicy, mm. where one starts to feel the energy of passion. Mm. And passion is good for us. Passion isn't a bad thing. Mm. If you're passionate about Christ or you're passionate about the 49ers or you're passionate about a particular philosophy. Passion is good. Mm. And we need more passion in our relationship, but we don't necessarily need more sex. Mm. If you create the passion, that which we call sex unfolds. Mm. And sex, sex is a biological urge that every species figures out how to have sex. 
sexual love, we could call it the art of conscious loving, changes how you feel. You got a headache, you can still do this embrace and breathe together and it changes the headache. You shut down, you don't want to make love because your partner's an asshole. Come together, bring the chakras together because mm. each of these centers in the center of our body represented by the symbols on my left and right side, uh, the yantras for these centers of power, generators, reservoirs of power called chakras. Bring them together and they know what to do to get back in harmony. It's like a magnet, highly charged, is meeting a dense piece of iron. And by bringing it together, that iron becomes a magnet. Mm. And you magnetize towards each other. How can you not want to make love? How can you not want to be the giver of things that give pleasure to our partner, mm. that awaken consciousness in our partner, that deepens the love that you've established together? And the beautiful thing about Tantra is you needn't be in a relationship. Mm. Two people on a first day can do certain practices that won't get them in trouble, won't be moving too fast for one of the partners and change how they feel. Open them up. Oh, my heart's open, it was close to you. Oh my God, I'm feeling my energy in my second chakra in the area of the genitals and the sacrum. I wasn't feeling that I had stuck energy. What a beautiful practice. And I believe it's the most important practice of life, learning how to love. Mm, I absolutely agree with you. I think that now more than ever, because of what we've learned through the pandemic, we really, um, it's time to come back to that. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to read an excerpt from your book, Tantra, The Art of Conscious Loving. And I just wanted to share with some people uh, aspects of this book. because yeah. I really want everybody to get this book. It's, it's a very simple to use step-by-step -step guide to apply Tantra in, um, in your life. And in the preface, you write, uh, sexual love is an art form, ancient in origin, and now needed in the world more than ever before. If you walk this tantric path of more love, consciousness, and harmony, you will find it. This easy to read book is still as relevant and transformative in nature as it was 20 years ago. And I think you wrote this preface in 2010. Is that right? Um, no, I wrote that preface in, in uh, 1979. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, gosh. The 25th anniversary uh, copy but it's been years since then. Wow, it's amazing. It says exactly what you were just sharing with us. Sex is a biological urge that every animal species knows. Tantric love, tantric sexual love is a learned skill that is easy to master if you practice it. And, you know, and you also say in here, climax is derived from the ancient Greek word, which means staircase to the heavens. And you wish everybody who reads this more love and spiritual awakening on your tantric path. Um, I know that what you were just sharing is really important that if we just come in and embrace. And one of the things that I've found after practicing um, and being certified by you is whether you're hugging someone and aligning your chakras with another person or you're making love um, and aligning your chakras with another person there is uh there is a like the magnetism that you were talking about but there's also like a a tuning like tuning forks um that happen when two people 
are embracing and the chakras are talking to each other. And one of the first uh, programs that I took with you was you and uh, Caroline were teaching at Esalen and it was a couples retreat. And I remember you sharing with all of us that, you know, your chakras remember each other. That is complete. That is stuck with me ever since I heard you share that. And I've found the same thing is true in my life with my tantric um, partners. Um, when we align our chakras together, it's almost like an instantaneous remembrance of all that we have energetically been through together. Is that something that you find is 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 uh, what you were just sharing about? The longer you've been together as a couple, the greater your potential to create that magnetism, that feeling of oneness. But usually the longer you've been together, the more you've pushed each other's buttons yeah. and fights that were never resolved. And there's a residue, like, the basement where we put our emotional gar garbage that gets stuffed. And that can get in the way when you come in together and you're feeling like she's a bitch and he's an asshole and you'll forgive that French. But sometimes it can feel like that in relationship. And you blame the other for what you're feeling. So when you put them together, instead of magnetic <laughs> attraction, it's instead magnetic repulsion. How do we get together? How do we love each other? I don't know why I married you. <laughs> we remember everything they ever did in the years we've been together. So this is a way of cleaning that up quickly. Having an intention, I choose this moment to come together in this place with you and co-create love. And if we started too tired to make love, we come together anyway. If one of us has a headache and doesn't want to make love, we bring the bodies together in a way that feels safe for the other partner. And then going beyond the physical and energy body is coming in and starting to make our breath one. For in the two breaths becoming one, the two energy bodies and the two physical bodies clear out their stuff that's in the way from us connecting. And you start to feel, oh, I love the way this feels. I love you so much. <laughs> Didn't you just call me an asshole? No, I love you. I'm so sorry. Change the way you feel. Don't let how you feel stop you from being a lover. Show up, pay attention, bring the bodies together and breathe. And we have about a half a dozen positions we teach in our beginner's weekend of comfortable positions you can get together. Sit in, stand in, back to front, front to back, and start doing the breathing. And I'm always amazed in our courses within five minutes, the whole energy in the room changes. And it's as simple as coming together and this is one of the reasons why you call it the art of conscious loving, not just the art of loving, right? Because it 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 does require us to be make a conscious choice to be in bracing, to be in breath with each other, to be in a in a loving activity versus you know um, those wounds and the 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 triggers that uh, happen naturally to everyone after you've lived with someone and had a relationship with someone for a long period of time. And you have a history with other people of the same sex that have did similar or worse. Yes. To you, and that gets stuck in the second chakra and the heart chakra. Yes. So the difference between sex. It's a second chakra connection, yes. physical and energetic. And it usually has to do with energy moving out of us. Yes. We often, especially men, feel tired after they express their energy and in an ejaculatory fashion. So yes. it's so important to talk about that because um, 
I I know that we, you and I haven't talked in a long time, but a lot of the work that I'm doing now is helping men who are my students to learn what um, is the ejaculatory control practices. I call it non-ejaculatory orgasm practices for, for men. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Because a lot of people who listen to me and um, study with me are wanting to understand this practice. And I do have, you do have a section of that in your book. You want me to read the section first or do you want to just- I don't know the subject. Yes. First of all, there are a lot of men that are loving the Tantra course right up to the point where I start talking about being the master of one's sexual energy and giving up the compulsive need to ejaculate, to squirt every time they're sexual, whether it's with themselves or partner or partners. That seems to be the goal we're conditioned to go for. And it's one way of playing with the energy. But another way is, wait a minute, if, if my favorite part of making love is orgasming, we ought to know your orgasm is five seconds long. That's it, baby. Count them. <laughs> but it's five seconds of timelessness and it's extraordinary original experience of energy in one's body if one's a male having that orgasm so when they hear wait a minute you're going to take that away from me i don't want to do this practice i say no we're going to take that feeling of i'm going to come soon you know how sexy that is well instead of speeding up and ejaculating we slow down we use our breathing we use simple techniques every man can learn to pull back from that wave that's about to crash on us and we'll be enervated from the loss of the energy. And we learn to back up and then we can go forward again and make love longer. And even better when you get someone skilled at these techniques, you can get right up to I'm gonna come soon and relax. And it's like floating in the ocean rather than body surfing a big wave. Uh, it's renewing. And as you pause there, the body is able to absorb some of this energy, sexual energy, which is the creative energy coming from the creative chakra, mm. the second chakra. Mm. That's the chakra that has the most energy of all the chakras each chakra different energy. There's where the life force is. And Tantra says, hey dummy, instead of losing that every time, every time, and then you're 60 something or 70 something and you can't get it up anymore. Play with your energy while you're younger, become the master so you can make love for as long as your beloved wants you to make love. Because a lot of women, feel their men ejaculate too quickly. Mm. A lot of other women would desire their husband, would you just get it over with? <laughs> so I don't have to be bothered with your unconscious pounding of me. Mm. So it's a dance tantra. It's a mode of communication. And it's a way of reading the highest levels of energetic ecstasy, loving ecstasy. Pleasure is good for you. Mm. It's health inducing. Mm. We get conditioned by the church or a belief system that says, no, pleasure is bad. Mm. But the, the Shastras say attachment to pleasure causes suffering, not pleasure. Pleasure is part of the world of duality that we've incarnated in on the earth. There's light and dark. There's, I like those techniques. I like those feelings. And I don't like pain. And I don't like crying. And I don't like you. And yeah. So let's go to the highest level of sexual ecstasy. Like the one poets remind us about. Porn, where's the love? They don't 
know about love, apparently. Mm. And kids are learning about sex now through porn. And that's not real life. Those are actors fulfilling fantasies. And while you might want to make that your fantasy, those fantasies really pull you away from the direction you want to go in. Where's the love in this? I really appreciate you saying that um, because I have a, a young daughter who's 19 and she's just getting ready to explore the world of relationship. And um, in my own research, I've found that um, even you know, young men as early as 20 years old are having ED problems because of porn addiction and children, you know, boys, girls, non-binary um, folks are, you know, watching porn as not only, um, you know, their sensual practice, but also as their sex education. So what can you say about, you um, a conscious form of sex education that Tantra can be? Well, I, I feel I've been saying that. Yeah, I agree. Um, Sometimes we have to say it more than one time. <laughs> yeah. I would think if you have a porn addiction that ends in making the porn the object of your focus, mm you're missing part of the boat. Yeah. If you're using it to get to the point where you have an ejaculatory orgasm, you usually turn off the porn when that's done. Mm. So instead, and this is Grand Taoist Grandmaster Montauk Chia shared this. He said when he was a young man, there were semi-clad women in the center fold of the daily newspaper in Thailand. And he, as a young man, would find it stimulating. But what he learned was that he felt tired and a little down after ejaculating, guilty even. And so he says, watch porn, pleasure yourself, but not to the point of ejaculation. Yeah, that it, it is the stimulation and the energy and the passion that will renew you. So he, he would say, thank you, goddess, after having touched himself in a pleasurable way, but not to ejaculate. That was for his high school girlfriend or later for his wife. So I'm not here to put down porn. I'm just saying maybe there's a better way each individual can use it certainly not as an educational tool on how to make love. Mm. You can learn some positions that you'll likely injure yourself trying to emulate. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching, I think it was The Daily Show last night, and uh, there was a woman being interviewed. I think she was a minor state sen senator in Texas. And she was screaming, I don't want my middle school kid having anal sex at 13 years of age. I don't have anal sex. I don't want to have anal sex. And well, you've never tried it. And most people who try it don't try it with someone that know you gotta open that space. You gotta have it clean, but you gotta open it and lubricate it because there are 800 nerve endings just as you go in. Let me see if I can make an asshole here. Just as you're on the outside, you're 800 nerve endings. That's as many as you have in each nipple. That's about a third as many as men have in their circumcised penis. Mm. And a lot of those nerve endings just get choked almost to death when men pleasure themselves. Yeah. So we've got to reawaken the nerve endings. And then we've got to know that there are different places in the brain that the message of, oh, that feels good, there are different areas of the brain it can go to. 
including ones that give emotional satisfaction. Same amount of pleasure or more, but it touches the emotional part of the brain. Mm -hmm. And Tantra teaches the hand mudras and the body mudras to activate sleeping parts of the brain and connect up the genitals with the four different neural pathways that orgasm can go up. And each one of them feels different. I believe each one of them feels different every time. Who wants to go for same old, same old every time? Yeah. Agreed. So much pleasure we're missing as men and as women that have just shut down to men who aren't good lovers, who have never really been educated. We deserve that education, we both do. And you're not gonna get it in high school and you're not gonna get it in college and you're not gonna get it in porn and mom and dad sure ain't gonna teach you. Mm -hmm. So here's this ancient art form translated for 21st century sexuality. When I started practicing Tantra, in 1969, there was, I think, one book available hmm. on Tantra, and it wasn't a very good one. I happened to find it on a subway car coming home from college one night, and here was this book on Tantra. Wow. And I looked out and I ran into conscious women that I learned to listen to instead of correcting them <laughs> and learn to hear what is it she wants. I know what I want, but what does she want and what does she need in order to give herself that? That's on us. We have to be the masters of the art form, the what to do's the how to move stuck energy in her and in us. And the primary purpose of Tantra Yoga is the awakening of consciousness in each of the chakras going down right to your butt. Consciousness connected right to your brain. And most of us don't live in that. A lot of people live from here up. Some people live a lot in their second chakra. But unless the heart is there, where is the love? In, unless communication is there. And another big one, unless sound is there. Because mm. we cut ourselves off when we're young. We don't want to make sound when we're having sex or playing with ourselves, masturbating. We stifle it. We don't want mom to hear us if we're with our boyfriend mm. in the bedroom. We stifle it. But the energy of orgasm, the full potential of its bigness, it rides with breath and sound. Mm. You know, and you just gotta watch some of these porn movies or even Hollywood movie. The guy ejaculates and he goes, <laughs> And he's, uh, 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 uh. where's the love? Yeah. Where's the connection? Yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to have a cigarette. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with you, Charles. I think that when, um, when people start to realize the, um, the embrace, the breath, but not only the embracing and the breath and aligning the chakras, but then the next step is the toning because the vibration of the tone, but also um, how it affects those four neurological pathways when the tone actually is allowed to escape the body and communicate not only to your own body that you're having pleasure, but also to your partner's body. I think that's the next place where I find a lot of students are stuck is they 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 have a pattern of having their fifth chakra shut down and once that opens up their experience is 
transformed forever and they and and they tend to once it opens up it becomes a part of of the art of conscious loving going forward um but to get them to realize that their fifth chakra is actually closed off and that that's preventing a you a person from feeling the um the uh, enormousness of of the energy that's flowing through you while you're having you know pleasure with another person or even just pleasure with yourself I think is it's a huge that's huge it stifles it if you don't make the sound yeah so you know I've taught in my classes over a hundred thousand people mm. and I've taught private students God I used to do four or five a week pretty constantly, I found giving them a pillow, telling them the philosophy behind what we're gonna do now is as you start to feel I'm coming, you bring your awareness down to where you feel that, that's energy, and you breathe slowly in as if you could pull that energy. And as soon as the breath is in, you Open the throat center and you start making a sound. Ah! But if you have a pillow on, it won't wake up your grandma in the back room, but you'll get the same effect. And I'm sure you use the pillow because it's something we teach right in the beginner's class. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. The using a pillow, helping someone to be more comfortable with things that they initially would think would be uncomfortable, right? Bringing people into getting comfortable with the uncomfortable is a major part of, of I think, all of our teachings. And what I learned from you is to use that. Yes. What's really important if they're going to do this technique, the person having the orgasm is the one that puts the pillow over yes. the mouth. Not right. the other one, the nose. You don't take the pillow and go, ah! <laughs> Right, that's another trauma that would have to be released from the fish chakra. <laughs> well, I'm told there are some people that like to choke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's not that's a whole nother pe um, podcast for sure. Um, Charles, tell us a little bit about Sacred Spot and how you discovered and you know really coined this term, Sacred Spot. God, I feel like whoever was the first person to America, and I'm looking for India. I've had a lot of powerful women in my life from the time I was young. Mm -hmm. A yoga teacher, 35, seduced me when I was 19. Mm -hmm. And she was wild, she had three lovers. I was her yoga lover and she had her massage guy and the guy that liked the opera. And it was really ahead of her time. But I got to be trained by an older woman. Mm. And as I went through life, I continued to, they know what they want. If you just shut up and listen or ask questions or observe is what you're doing, creating the right, moving us in the right direction. And so, 68, I was uh, getting Rolfed and studying with a very sexy woman, Rolf Movement. And midway, it, there's a lot of body, she embraces you and corrects your posture. And she started groping me. And I responded, and she, and I said, Look, I've paid you a hundred dollars. I've paid me to learn this. And she said, I'll continue the session, but only if you promise to come back tonight. She was a triple Scorpio from California and I was still a New York kid. And she said, look, if you'll do this and put your other hand here. And then later on, when I was making love to her, she, if you all aim for this same, 
amazing things will happen. And I, that sounds good. <laughs> and amazing things happened. Mm. Three hours later, I hear her on the phone calling your best girlfriend. You got to get over there. <laughs> I got to pick you over, Diane. So I immediately tried it on someone else. Mm. And there was vaginal orgasm, and there was the first ejaculation I experienced. And when my mind could feel and experience and see that, and see the bliss in the woman's eyes and the sound she was mm -hmm. making, wow, this is important. And I, my yoga school was across the street from a hotel where all the airline stewardesses spent their overnights, 55th and 7th Avenue in New York. And it was easy to find beautiful stewardesses. Mm. You want to come up to my yoga school? I was younger and I tried it on everyone. Mm. Some of them hated it. Mm. Some of them asked for things that I poo pooed because I know what to do. And I found that every woman and every sacred spot is different, but that there is this ability to function on a high level of sexual energy that most men, uh, most women have never experienced. Most men don't know how to get to. Mm -hmm. Now researching, I discovered that the wonderful clitoris that just about every woman has come to know and love with its 8,000 potential nerve endings that are connected. Most women, they're not all connected to the brain mm -hmm. just because they got them. But that there was this other pathway and lo and behold, uh, uh, the drawings showed, oh, this goes up to the right hemisphere of the brain. Mm. It's another pathway. Mm. And sexology and science has discovered the clitoris is one wonderful pathway. And then there are three others, areas we need to touch and stimulate, very different than the clitoris. And uh, there are schools that teach mastery of understanding those 8,000 nerve endings and how to bring a woman not just to a male type of five second orgasm, but multiple orgasms and extended waves of orgasm. Mm. Sacred spot I just shouted out. Mm. Uh, I tested it on the women in my life. I, I guess I was poly before there was a poly. <laughs> people that invented poly I was sexual with them uh, not as a light not as a teaching thing everybody should have all the lovers they should have but as a potential mm. with the question is it possible more love can be better for you and is it true that having only one lover leaves you dissatisfied in other areas of your life that you would like your lover to fulfill, but they're just not that type of guy or woman or, yeah. Yeah. I am, I'm so grateful for your discoveries around the sacred spot because it literally changed my life. And I know, um, uh, a, I know many, 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 I don't know the actual stats, but um, in the thousands of women, um, it's changed their lives as well. So I want to personally say thank you for all the work that you have done to um, really have this movement uh, be accessible for all of us. I'm, I'm, and, and the, the G spot is not the sacred spot. Thank the you. Spot is like an energetic meridian, mm. Baja, right? meridian. It's pretty specific, but it has to, the area has to be stimulated for that point to come to the surface. Yes. A lot of people are pressing on the spongy tissue, yep. which is now, that's the sacred spot. Right. 
can I make yeah. a woman, you know, ejaculate? Can I make her squirt? That's like the focus instead of it's called sacred spot for a reason. <laughs> it's like to be worshipped. <laughs> You know, if you go up a little bit higher and it's not that much higher, you're pressing directly on her bladder. Right. And often what that is, oh, I made her squirt, you just made her pee. Yeah. Do the taste test, do the strip test. <laughs> yeah. Um, and test it, have her urinate before you make love, after you make love and compare it to what you've gathered. Yeah. Smell it, taste it, whatever. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I think also- has to be awakened. Yes. It's an awakening process. It's not, oh, there's the button, press it, boom. Right, uh, it's, it's coaxing out. I love that one of the ways that you describe how you touch it is this come hither kind of motion. It, it definitely is not something that you can force, but I think from the perspective of, you know, conventional sexual understanding is that everything is kind of a pound, 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 and we're forcing something to be open instead of coaxing, whether it's the rosebud, the anal, you know, uh, sphincters, or whether it's the sacred spot, or even a sleeping giant lingam, right? Um, we, we can consciously with, with reverence, um, coax these sexual um, energies out of a person's body or our own body. Would you agree to that? I would use the word love it out. Yeah. There's like less it. manipulation and it. Love is always a free offering. Yes. Receive it, if you will. Coaxing sounds to me a little manipulative. Got it. I'm I got it. I like that. Yes. Yes. We're, we're there as the giver of sacred spot massage mm. to give her an experience. It's for her awakening, her healing, her enjoyment, her pleasure. And I got to tell people that are doing sacred spot healing work that a healing session never is combined with sex. Yes. When you're being a healer, be a healer. Don't end it by you getting off in her when once you've given her pleasure, now I'll have my turn. Let this be an offering just for the goddess. She's gonna learn things that are gonna blow your mind, guys. We haven't had the best sex of our lives yet. We don't even know how to have the best sex of our life. We know how to screw, mm. but we don't know how to be a sexual lover mm. in harmony and ecstatic bliss Mm. with our partner in the same time, in the same moment. What a great thing God has created. Ecstatic bliss. You don't have to meditate for 40 lifetimes to experience your ananda, your ecstatic bliss. Mm. It can be cultivated. It's already there in us. It's not to be acquired. It's to be awakened from its slumber. Mm. You use the word awakened, um, and I think that that's also a really good word to use here. And that really moved me when you said awakened um, to this bliss. It's really powerful. Is sacred spot something that is only um, uh, for women, or is sacred spot also something you can do for men? There's no ancient texts that I know that talks about a spot inside the man's base chakra. Uh -huh. uh, again, it was exploration and it wasn't particularly an exploration that I wanted to undertake. I remember the class that opened my mind. I was teaching about sacred spot yeah. and there was a, a couple in the class, but he was more gay than bi. Mm -hmm. And he said, Charles, you're so uptight. Why won't you talk about men's sacred spot? <laughs> and he was right at the time. I was kind of uptight. And he's, I tried to backtrack and shut him up, but it was his house. We were teaching him. 
<laughs> and uh, he said, Charles, don't you realize that millions upon millions of gay men, it, there must be something that feels good there. You know, and the class ended and that kept ringing. There must be something up there. And so Caroline undertook her exploration of getting past those two sphincter muscles, which are like guards at the door of the sacred space behind. And we got to get out of our mind that we're going to be full of shit because mm. the shit is held up higher in the rectum. Yeah. Once you get by those sometimes painful tight muscles and massage them, uh, I'll give a, a demonstration, massage them from this. <laughs> <laughs> there are 800 nerve endings just in the sphincter and then there are these areas inside. And there is an area up near the prostate but it's a little below the prostate, a little indentation. Uh, when you stimulate the prostate, it will swell and often cover that area. So find the prostate, drop down, and it's an energy point. Mm. It almost feels like a magnet. Boom! Mm. Got it. Mm -hmm. And I've had the experience twice of ejaculating from my anus, from sacred spot massage. The first time it happened in an advanced class, the students were practicing giving to men. Mm. A couple came back and the woman said, Charles, Charles, you'll never believe it. My husband ejaculated from his asshole. <laughs> and he said, have you ever heard of that, Charles? And I said, no, I never heard of that. <laughs> but any experience, two weeks later, I was teaching in New York. Another couple comes up, Amazing. same experience, the man is ejaculating. Have you heard of this, Charles? I said, I've heard of this. So far in my experience, it's very rare. And, uh, and then it came, my wife chose me to be a model for pleasuring a man to her best girlfriend who husband had just left her for another woman and mm. she never dated in 20 years. And Caroline, teach me what to do. We'll demonstrate on Charles. He's demonstrated on me enough. And she was like a Vogue model with these long, gorgeous fingers and perfect nails. And she reached up there for places in me. And I had, Caroline was doing one chakra and she was doing the other chakra and there were other hands doing other things. I had this amazing experience and they just started bursting out in laughter and glee. Look, Charles, and they splashed my <laughs> Rita. And I was like, that came out of, that was incredible. Yeah combination of those three different neural pathways that were being stimulated at the same time. Wow. And I still didn't ask for it by name because I was still a tight ass. <laughs> but over the years of teaching and practicing, because I'm not a believer in teaching what I don't practice, my old tight asshole opened up didn't mean I was dripping poop wherever I walked. Mm -hmm. It just was easier to get into a little bit of oil of pro than, mm -hmm. hello. The guards at the gate loosened up. Mm -hmm. And those two sphincter muscles, those two guards are chronically tense. Mm -hmm. And they block energy and can cause problems. Constipation on. Mm -hmm. The base chakra is a chakra that needs healing. If you take a look at colon cancer and rectal cancer and the different cancers that they're finding in the penis now, uh, every chakra is worthy of love and healing. Mm. And if you think sex is dirty, you need to do some work on that. Mm. And if you think Base chakras are dirty. 
well, you need to clean it a little bit, but then discover what a sexy thing is. The men in my advanced classes of teacher training have to have this experience to graduate. Your healing is part of you being the teacher, being more whole, being committed. And I'm always delighted when the women come in the next day, so happy. I've never done that. It's such a sexy area. Mm. No wonder men are always trying to get in mind. Mm. So if it's your cup of tea, you try it. Mm. And uh, if it's not, or if you tried it once and you didn't like it, try it again with a professional that knows what she's doing. Yeah, you got to open the temple door before you try to plow into it. Yeah, I think it's actually really beautiful that you share about base chakra work. Uh, I've found it for myself as well as for, you know, my lovers and also for my students when they have healed their base chakra and are able to receive pleasure there they can really um go beyond some of the other blocks of survival in their lives and i'm so grateful for all your teachings around that you said earlier that um uh you you were talking about your beginners weekends and i know that's how most people can start their journey of studying with you. Tell us a little bit about um, when the next beginner weekend is, um, where it is, and what someone can learn from it. Well, we've moved our school up to Carmichael, California, which is near the American River that forms part of Sacramento. Sacramento, sacrament, which is what I hope for everyone, sex will become a sacrament. Uh, my CTE programs in the latter stages of that uh, three and four, I'm looking for vacation places hmm. uh, in the Caribbean, in Mexico, in Central America, Costa Rica, Guatemala, to find the right place because I like the idea of it being a beautiful place <laughs> where I'm not feeding 30 people in my living room. <laughs> right. <laughs> where I go in and the room is there all set up. Mm. And I can do what I love doing the most, which is awakening consciousness in people about the art form of sexually exquisite lovemaking. Mm. I've created a new course for my graduates that I've sketched out. I'm so excited to give. Oh, please uh, do tell. <laughs> Source Tantra, the Art of Conscious Loving, The Practices. Ooh. And it's an experiential based course where if they've had the beginning and they've learned a little breathing and they did, the, I'm going to run them through a routine. You know the way there are hatha yoga routines, you start with this stretch, you go to that one, cobra look is both. Well, there are, for lack of a better word, uh, esoteric and metaphysical, beyond the, meta the physical, techniques of foreplay mm. that you can do if you're friends, you can do if you're lovers, you can do if you're married couples, you can do it with your clothes on or with your clothes off. Mm. But these classes, which I've turned into movies with beautiful music score and mm. uh, segments where I teach people about energy. So it's not an airy fairy thing. They actually feel experience, see it in action. And uh, what's the third thing? I'm, my brain is saying, Charles, you're having had enough practice. <laughs> no, you're doing great. You're doing great. I'm, I am locked onto every word you're sharing that you've got this new course for graduates, which as a graduate, and I'm so excited about because my last training with you is CT5, which is Certified Tantra Educator Level 5. And as 
I was telling you back then, please do another, um, especially around practices. And and when we come together as a community of Tantra, Tantrikas or Tantric practitioners, it helps all of us to um, really anchor in and solidify our practices. And it's definitely something that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be at, <laughs> if you'll have me. <laughs> Oh, it's um, amazing. For anyone level one through five uh, who wants to spend the week mm. mostly practicing Tantra, I'll teach a couple of new subjects to bring people up to speed. Mm. I'll handle questions because people have questions, but every day they will practice for an hour red Tantra, and they'll also have a white Tantra segment. Uh, in each of the classes, and they'll have assignments. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've done this, you're all open and juicy. There's a half hour till dinner, figure out what to do. Yeah. And uh, like one of the nice things is you meet very nice people that you feel, I wouldn't mind embracing them and breathing and seeing what it's like to kiss their neck and throat. Mm. Out of that level five, I shot the whole seminar. Yeah. Uh, high quality sound and shooting. And uh, the best classes you remember, the Red Tantra practices and the like, they were recorded, they were edited, mm -hmm. they were given full music from start to back, just as the background. Mm -hmm. So the music blocks out some of the orgasms from the room. <laughs> and I, I created special effects with my editor mm. to show the energy. You can talk about it and people go, what? But when you see energy going through someone and they're catching it in this hand and they're being instructed to breathe, and then I've had something never done before, hmm. uh, except a little in my classes. Every exercise that I lead the people through, a chakra is being stimulated. Hmm. And if yantra is appearing, either over where the touch is or to the side, so the power of these ancient symbols of energy and power and of the chakras gets activated and awakens the chakra. So every time you do the routine, the third time, you're so much more conscious. You're seeing things, you're feeling things. And every time you finish the class, you feel good. Mm. So there are five white tantra and two, uh, five red tantra, couples practices, and two solo practices, laya yoga or white tantra that people can get. I thought I had six months to live. How, how do I want to spend? I can't go out. Orion, my son, helped me. We did the preliminary edits. We sent it to the pro. I called in markers for people in the music business who owed me favors. And I took what I knew of metaphysics, the power of the yantras, and said, it's time to put this out to the world. My teacher who shared that with me said, now is not the time, but that was 1973. And he's passed away. So the 2020s, it's a different time in history. And some of the ancient mysteries that won't get people in trouble. There's nothing to force Kundalini openings but to gently prepare the energy body for the incredible increase in, of energy that happens as you practice ecstatic love or as you learn the techniques of Laya Yoga to love yourself through stretching and breathing and focusing the mind and using the yantras. It's the grandfather of Hatha Yoga, Laya Yoga. Mm. And uh, I wanted to make sure a class would go out that would give, give people my patented breathing sequence. Um, 
and the sequence of, I think it's 35 minutes of asanas mm. done in this metaphysical way of Laya Yoga. There's a chakra to focus on. There's breathing to do. There's an area of stretch that you want to go stretch until you feel that area. And then that's a chakra area. Okay, use your mind to create the picture of the yantra and bring it down to where you're feeling the stretch. And anyone that practices yoga, if they add these metaphysical techniques, their yoga will deepen. There's much yoga out there where they don't even teach how to breathe during the postures or that there's a chakra to focus on. But the ancient texts confirm that. Hatha Yoga, Pratapika, Shiva, Samhita. These were not exercises to tone your abdomen or make you flexible like a ballet dancer. These are energetic poses to go into. And then the inner game, how you breathe, how you focus your mind, which chakra area to feel, and what other ways do you know how to stimulate the chakra areas? And it is through the yantras that I, I bring people through the door. Because when you have the experience of going into the chakra, the first thing you see within that circle is the yantras. And they have sound and they have vibration and they have color. Uh, it's captivating. Yeah, and that, practice, that practice, practice is one of my favorites. That was one of my favorite practices. And um, the, the signs that you have, the yantra um, images you have towards your left are so helpful. Um, it, it really transformed my um, learning of the chakras, but also applied tantra. You know, it was it's a practice with the tone, the sound of the chakra, the sacred geometry of the chakra, the color of the chakra, the placement of the chakra as you're breathing it up and as you're breathing it down. That practice just rocked my world. And it sounds like that's the one you were talking about, correct? Yeah, but in each posture, there's a designated chakra. Mm and with the yantra. So when you come into a stretch, you're in an energetic form. Yes. A mudra is being created as you hold those toes. Yes. But also, oh, there's my low back. That's the chakra to feel. And now what's that yantra? Mm. And every breath is there, not going up and going down, but got it. expanding mm. and then charging through the base chakra. Because it mm. clears out that stuff and the stiffness and much quicker than if you're just doing a stretch. But it also clears out any trauma or um, just debris, like energetic, you know, impurities in the chakra too. Wouldn't you say that that that's part of the Impurity the metaphysics of it and blocks at the interface where the chakra meets the nadi. Yes. The body are conduits like veins, but they carry energy. Oftentimes when you see a chakra, you'll see the nadis represented. It looks like breast and nipples. Uh, that's the heart chakra. And it's the one above me as well. I, I don't know if you can. Yeah, I see it. That's beautiful. Each one of those nipple looking artist Petals. representations. Yeah. You don't see it as nipples, but I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> lotus lotus petals, right? Are they called lotus petals? You can feed a, a lotus petal. Or nipples. It's a nani that carries the energy from the chakra to the body. Yes. Energy body, physical body. If there's a block there, it's not in the chakra. It's not in the nani, though there may be in the nani. It's right in the interface. Mm. And it's those yantras and the breathing that just says, hey, you're like this, try this. Mm. And the energy flows. One thing I want to tell you, you're, all the people that will watch this, yeah. 
is that if they go to artofconsciousloving.com, yes, as an introduction to the work, I created this introduction during COVID when I heard people weren't making love. I sent to all my students my movie that I created with Caroline, uh, Secrets of Female Sexual Ecstasy, What Every Man Should Know. And we spent a quarter of a million dollars way back when movies were expensive to make. And uh, after 25 years, I might have broken even, but I decided I'm going to give this away to everybody. It's dated, but the material is still wonderful and new for most people. And I'm going to give them the first of the classes that I created at level five. Okay. Uh, it's the one with the two uh, Indian doctors that demonstrated a 20 minute quickie. You just got 20 minutes. There are six things to do in 20 minutes together as a team. So that class had given away uh, surely in the hopes to get people practicing again, but also showing them a little piece of my new work. The other classes are an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, the white tantra um, are 40 minutes in an hour. It's a great thing to do when you got nothing better to do when you're tired of the news. Right. <laughs> or the going, Super Bowl is oh. over. <laughs> let's put this on and let's just follow the instructions and see what happens. Good things will happen. I love it. I'm so glad you've done that. And, you know, everything that you've invested in to teaching all of us, um, you know, I, even if you had just made a difference in one person's life, which I know it's not just one person, I'm one person you made a huge difference in the life of, but there have been thousands and thousands of people who you've made a difference in their lives from what you've invested, not only in the practices, but your studying that you've done your entire lifetime and, you know, making videos, teaching the courses, and then, you know, improving on the courses. Uh, I can't wait to see this new course that you have um, created for everyone. And I'm going to share the screen real quick because I have your website up and I want to show everybody the website that uh, you were just telling us about so that everybody can see what it looks like. So everyone, this is the Art of Conscious Loving website. It's artofconsciousloving.com. You can go here as Charles was just saying, and this is the video that he was just talking about. It says, watch this video now. That's actually the video he was just talking about the practices with uh, two Indian doctors who have been his students. Um, and, uh, and you can also get the uh, secrets of female sexual ecstasy from here as well. I want to just ask you, Charles, is there anything else that you think um, beginners to the tantric path need to know in order to practice i know we've talked about embracing and breathing and um you know slowing down and paying attention to the art of conscious loving is there anything you want to leave everybody with uh, about well, the, tantric the, pattern? the best website to go to is source where there's a bunch of free offers where our seminars are listed Art of Conscious Loving is a new site uh, having to do with this free offer of my new work and a free offer of something I'm so proud of still, Secrets of Female Ecstasy, because it captures female ejaculation live. And there was none of that on the planet when we took, had the audacity to do that in front of a group of students. Because uh, Caroline said, I'm a nice Kansas girl. We don't do things like that. And she did. And it was filmed and captured. And uh, there's so much on that Secrets of Female Sexual Ecstasy uh, film that people will love. 
start slow, but rightly so. But boy, you'll be learning things at the end of it. And the last thing I want to say is that Tantra is a practice. Mm. It's not a philosophy. It's not something you learn from reading a book or even taking a 48-hour seminar. It's a practice that you learn, and then you got to practice. And then it gets easy. And then it gets more expensive. And you'll find yourself loving love and loving the people that you choose to love and having a way to express the energy of love with another. And you must never forget that love is both an emotion, please save that for the one you love if you wish, but it's also an energy that can be put out in dozens of ways with people you care about. You can go to the checkout counter at the Safeway and that woman is checking you out and you say something to her like, boy, those earrings are great. They bring out the color in your eyes so nicely. And I'm obviously not hitting on her. I'm just complimenting her. And nobody has done that. She's been standing on her feet all day. I say, it must be terrible having to stand on your feet all day. Shouldn't they give you a chair? And just relating and loving her. And it's changed her day. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on this debut podcast episode for Sex for Life. Uh, my intention of creating this podcast, which I get very moved about, is to normalize the conversation around sexuality. And you've helped me do that. Um, we've touched on so many things that would otherwise be taboo to talk about. But as I hope everyone can see, when we normalize these conversations, we can learn from each other and we can have more love in our lives and more connection that is beautiful, sacred, and is a true representation of reverence for the human adventure. So thank you for teaching us about Applied Tantra. Um, you can be found uh, at theartofconsciousloving.com or source, source Tantra, sourcetantra.com. And it has been an honor to study with you, Master, Master Charles Muir. And um, it is an honor to have you as someone in my life that uh, guides, guides me and so many of my friends. Thank you so much. You're welcome and remember and teach trust in love. Oh, New York City, is this your beginner's weekend? Uh, it's the first of our series of 2022 beginner weekends. Yes. April 29th to May 1st. And then uh, May and June, we'll be doing programs in Sacramento. And in the fall, a CTE level one in Sacramento. And uh, end of October, not, not Halloween, but the week before, Boulder, Colorado has asked me to come back. Beautiful. So I'm getting back in gear. It's the thing I most do in my life. I love that. And I am, I, I'm sure everyone else is going to second this, but we're so glad that you have recovered from your cancer scare and your journey in cancer. We really are happy that you're back. Um, where can they find these dates? Is Are these dates going to be listed on? Sourcetantra.com. Okay. It's going to be on sourcetantra.com. Okay. Yeah, oh, there's so much there. There's free five minute film of me, there must be 50 of them. There's yeah. newspaper and magazine articles where I actually made the writer take the course before I would let them write about it. That's awesome. So at sourcetantra.com, they can find the dates for all of the seminars coming up. And they can also find out the information about some of the educators that you've trained, correct? There's an educator teacher list. Yes, the certified tantric educator, find the teacher. You can press in your geography and it'll bring up the teachers in that area. Beautiful, beautiful. 
Well, thank you. If there's anything that we left out verbally, we will put it in the show notes. So thank, thank you, you again. For being such a good teacher of Tantra and carrying the work to the world. You're welcome. You. You're welcome. It is my honor to follow and um, do my best, do the best that I possibly can to um, to follow in your footsteps as a Tantra teacher. and. Uh, I, I hope you get to teach a lot more uh, educators because we definitely have people who are really interested in the going down the tantric path nowadays and um, I, I hope all of them get an opportunity to study with you so thank you again be well we'll see you next time. hey. I'm Sequoia. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Sex for Life. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any comments, questions, or requests for episodes in the future, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you got to the end of this video, make sure to communicate to me with three peacock emojis and I will send you a free gift just from me and to conclude this video I am going to leave you with a quote from Havelock Ellis and that is sex lies at the root of life and we can never learn to reverence life until we know how to understand sex.